Get your hands out of your pockets, guys, because it's time to play with your balls. And I'm talking about gross, the ugly, the crazy, mad balls released in the mid-80s. This upset a lot of people, mostly teachers and parents. In 1986, gross was in. From garbage pail kids to green slime toys, almost every toy line had something green slime in it. And nothing was as round and as gross as M Toys Mad Balls. These were a series of baseball-sized balls that had gross-out faces on them. Let's look at Series 1. Screamy Meanie with his large tongue. Slobus, a rolling green creature with one eye hanging out. Arg, one-eye blue monster. Hornhead, a cyclops with one eye and a horn. Bus Brain, the mummy with rotten teeth. Arculus or Bus, just an eyeball. Skull Face, a skull with a large eye socket and red eyes and a big tooth. And finally, Crackhead, the red skinned zombie with an open brain. This toy series was such a big success, it spawned a comic book series, an animated TV show, and a video game. Everyone loved Mad Balls. Well, except parents and teachers. But how could anyone not love these? Sure, they were gross, but the company spent a lot of love and detail on making these balls. What was so bad about them, other than having a gross face? Well, according to the American Democratic Action, a citizens group, who denounced the toys in 1986, they said these monster balls were disgusting, sickening, bizarre, unpleasant, and offensive. The makers of Toy Ball, Am Toys, actually agreed with this statement, but said they didn't see a problem with that. Say kids love gross things, and this is just a fad, and fads come and go. The ADA didn't care if it was a fad. They wanted them gone, and gone now, and they asked retailers to quit selling Mad Balls and for parents to quit buying them for their kids. They said Mind Balls were the production of sick minds, and they said they even knew kids as young as five years old that had a Mad Ball. Joy Levin of the Toy Manufacturers of America said it was harmless fun and adults being upset by this was only making kids want to buy them more. And she was right. Between 1985 and 1986, over 6 million Mad Balls were sold. It was clear, gross or not, kids love playing with their balls. But M Toys wasn't the only one upsetting parents with gross toys. Alexon's The Making of the Grossed Out Toy Breath Blaster got heat from the ADA also as his toy landed on the 1986 Ugliest Toys of the Year list. However, that company said it's all in good spirits and there's nothing wrong with a good, healthy rebellion from a kid. And they said they didn't take much stock in people that got upset over a practical joke. And according to them, little boys have been grossing out their moms and sisters throughout history. Now, not all toy companies agree. Donald Kingsborough, whose World of Wonder talking teddy bear Teddy Ruxpin saying gross didn't have a staying power and it wasn't a good image for a toy company. He adds that it was just nonsense and like the pet rock it was just a fad that would come and go and be forgotten about in a couple of days. And it wasn't just toy companies that got upset as schools all across America started banning mad balls. It all seemed to start in Utah when an eight-year-old girl was beamed upside the head with a mad ball in American history class. Unnamed sources have confirmed to me that the ball that hit the girl upside the head was Hornhead. This did call M Toys to soften up the balls in radio release, fearing that kids could be hurt by it and they could face lawsuits. And M Toys did agree that one of the balls was pretty upsetting, and that was the ball known as Crackhead. The company says they did not know at all that Crackhead was a term for people addicted to crack cocaine. They said if they knew this, they never would have named one of the balls Crackhead. So that name was changed, and Crackhead became Bash Brain. And Toys would go on to release a Series 2, plus some spinoff lines, such as Super Mad Balls and Head Popping Mash Balls. But it seems it was Series 1, those released in the mid-80s, that really caught on. I remember back in the day, even teenagers had a Mad Ball. By Series 2, it seemed mostly people had moved on. And once the parents and teachers stopped complaining about Mad Balls, the kids stopped buying them. Sure, they were fun and gross, but when the teacher stops taking your Mad Ball, when your mom stops rolling her eyes at the sight of your Mad Ball, and when your sister starts screaming at the face on your Mad Ball, it just wasn't as much fun anymore. The toy companies were right about one thing. Mad Balls were a fad. 
and it faded kind of quickly. And here's something I thought was a little interesting. The maker of Madballs, M Toys, was owned by the greeting card company, America Greetings. So in a way, Madballs were made by a greeting card company. That's some kind of departure. But this was a story about how one toy company upset parents and teachers with their balls. I want to thank you for watching. Tell me all about your balls in the comments below. And I want to thank you for watching, and I'll be back very soon. Balls gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball. They're gross, funny, yucky. Sick. There's eight, so you can take your pick. We throw, catch, it's uh oh fun. There's so much gross in every one. The reeky fun is what they're for. There's so much ugly, so much more. Gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball. We play with a mad ball. We play with a mad ball. Mad ball. Mad ball. Freaky fun for everyone sold separately from Amtoy. Mad ball. Hey, jump man channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>